This is Lisa. Hey. What are you going to teach us today? I'll be showing you how Rembrandt painted different materials. And I'll be doing this by painting the Maria Trip. Whoa, not so fast, Lisa. What are you doing? I'm making a imprimatura, which is a colored ground layer, which actually helps you in painting the skin. That's why it's a bit light and yellowish. I've prepared another panel because it takes some time for the ground layer to dry. And also I've transferred the underdrawing with red chalk. I'm applying a really 17th century palette. So I'm starting with white, ochre, different types of yellow, a very bright red. And after that, a more dark lake red, an azurite like color and an earth green which in this case is a sap green, but we're cheating. And then the browns, this is a raw umber for the background and a burnt umber. And we end with a black. I'm now uh, fixing the underdrawing with pigment and also these lines, you still see some of them in the final painting. And I'm doing this with a burnt umber, with a darker brown. After you have the underdrawing like this fixed with pigment, you use a broader brush, larger brush, and you make the paint, the water mixable oil paint, you make it more wet, then you can make more shadows, for instance, in the chin where it's pretty dark and this way you can also already give a base tone to the hairs. Rembrandt also uses a um, red ochre for the underdrawing. I haven't got that on the palette yet so I will add it. And also this red ochre will be very watery, very thin. And I use it to give another tone to the hairs, for instance. I'll also use it to make some more details here in the eyes. And also the red is used for some shadow beneath the pearl necklace. And then you can continue like this for the whole painting. For instance, also the hand is painted like this with a dark brown and a red washing on top of it. When you finished your underpainting with the burnt umber and the red ochre, you can start painting the background with the raw umber, like this. It's all dark there. And I'm using the fan brush again, but what you need basically is a broad, bit coarse brush to do this with. So you can now continue making your under painting with burnt umber and red ochre. And when you've done this and you've started using the raw umber, then you have really made the background and you can start with the real painting. And I have already prepared. And I will now continue with the raw umber because you also see it in the garment she's wearing. But with that, we already really start with making the fabrics. And I will now continue with the raw umber because you can already see it in the painting itself, in the top layers, it's here. So I will use it to start painting the gown. When you've painted a part just later on, you can retouch it and then you can smoothen the brush strokes like I do here. I will now start with the black of the gown because it's uh, one of the first things that has to dry because later on I partially will want to paint the lace on top of it. So I just make it very basic, all black. I will now paint the skin and the skin tone 
in the 17th century, as Rembrandt painted it, was often with white and ochre. And then you can add some reds and browns to it. You need only a very tiny bit of red because it, otherwise it becomes very pink. Now I'm outlining the shadow of the pearl necklace. So I've painted the shadow with a red ochre underneath. Now I'm giving it its form. Painted more skin than is visible in the painting because you see it underneath the lace. So you want that same color to be present. Okay, I'll now continue with the face. Make it in more detail. I have now painted the hands like I painted the face. So thin layer of yellow ochre and white and a bit of vermilion. And you can see that it's pretty transparent. So you actually use the yellow under layer that was already on the panel. I'll now fine tune the skin tones a bit and I need some extra uh, shadow. There's a not enough shadow everywhere. So I'll add some raw umber, so a bit of the greenish brown very thinly to deepen the shadow parts. And how do you know if you have the right lighting and shadows on the face? Uh, I check the example, the original painting, so that I can see that there is some more light. I'll now add some extra red details again around the eyes. And a bit of red on the cheek. I'm now painting the eyes, the white in the eyes, and I'll now finish the eyes and the lips and the rest of the face. I'm now using black and burnt umber to make the eye stand out. There's of course the red in the corner of the eye. Now adding some highlights and the highlights on the nose. I will blend them in a bit again later on when they're a bit drier. And I'll now do the mouth. But I now see that I have forgotten some of the hairs in the eyebrows. And he painted them by just using the skin color and moving over the shadow that was applied earlier. You need a very fine brush for it, as you can see. Finer than this one, actually. I'm now painting the hairs and since there's already a base made with burnt umber and red ochre, I don't have to do a lot. Just have to show or suggest some hairs on the forehead here. When I'm done just making the separate hairs, I will use the umber as well to make some washings uh, to make some variations in the hair color also in the parts here and there. And I think I'll add some burnt umber loose hairs as well. Otherwise she has just one color on her forehead, which would be weird.
I'm now adding some extra hairs on the forehead with a different color to make it look more vivid. This is a burnt umber again. And now with the color of the skin, I'll add some lighter hairs just next to her face. Okay, I'll now be painting the lace. It has to be a bit off-white, of course, otherwise it's way too light, so I have to test it a bit. First creating the outlines and also testing the tone a bit. I think it's a bit too grey now, so maybe it should be a bit whiter, because there's a highlight there on the lace. This way it stands out better. As you can see in the painting, some parts are more and less translucent, so that's why I set it up now pretty roughly. And I will now try to make that difference more distinct. I'm now painting the edges of the lace color, trying to blend in a bit of the raw umber that's in the hair for the shadow. Maybe I'll have to apply some extra shadow later on. Okay, so I have painted the lace to a large part already. First I added a, I applied a thin layer of white, which was very transparent. You can see it here in between, you still see the black gown very well through and then with thicker paint just like straight from the tube here i just push the brush onto the panel so that you can have this nice nicely fine structure of the lace uh, there's an extra piece of lace on the sleeve. So now I'm um, first painting it pretty transparently again and then I'll add more paint again. Rembrandt did it much more while well, using variation in this technique. I'll now start painting the pearls and uh, in the middle of the pearl you have this brownish color so I'm using a raw umber and I left the lace open here a bit because I hadn't made the pearls yet so that later on I can pull the lace over it again and now I'll use a mixture, a bit of the skin tone mixture again the ochre and white to make it a bit off white again and then it looks more translucent because the color is close to her skin. Pearls are, of course, well, not completely opaque. What's that other brush for? I'm using the other brush uh, to lean on because I have to be very close now to the panel. 
I'm using a bit of a skin tone color and I'm mixing it with the raw umber that I added in the middle. Now I'll now use a more white mixture, so still the same mixture but with more white to paint the reflection in the back of the pearl. And the front of the pearl where the light falls on the pearl. And there's a tiny color variation in the pearls, so they're not all brown, yellow, whitish. There's a bit of a bluish dot on them. So I'll try to do that as well on some of them in the middle, just to give them an extra color. And last, a real white highlight. Retouching it a bit with raw amber again because I lost some of that in the middle. And they seem a bit too white now. So I'm adding a bit of ochre again some parts. Okay, so in the meantime I have finished the lace also on her sleeves and now I will paint the brooch in the middle on her chest. Now first painting the shadows and a bit of the under layer for the pearls in raw umber again. And I'll now start with the gold, the rim of the trinket. I use it to refine the shape. But in the basis to apply the ochre isn't even necessary anymore because there's already ochre there because it's the colored ground that I use. I'm just retouching it a bit. And then now with a light bright yellow try to make the highlights in the gold. And then the brightest yellow again to really make the highlights on the gold. Right, now the stones. If you look up close very well, then you see that their base stone is brown and on top of it there is a green. And that gives them their greenish color. I'm using the burnt umber. Otherwise the contrast is not big enough if you choose the raw one, I think. And now I'll use some green and perhaps some yellow and white for the highlights in stones. Okay, and now painting pearls again with a skin tonish white of ochre and white, mixing it a bit with the umber. When you do this wet and wet the pearls, then you can make the highlights blend nicely. And then with the last blob of white, like I just did, you get the sheen of them in the final stage. And a bit of white in the stone to make it stand out more. Well, I need 
can keep working on this, of course, but this is the, well, a bit of the basic way to start doing it. I'm now mixing black and white to make the highlights on the black gown she's wearing. And, well, it's important not to make it too white, otherwise it will be too shiny. So I have to see how this works. A stroke and another stroke and then blending it in a bit by just roughly retouching it. This way you do get a sense of a three-dimensional type of fabric. Well, it's not quite finished yet, but I think I've shown you the different color combinations to paint different materials in a Rembrandtesque manner. Uh, and you could now finish the painting like I will yourself. Thank you very much, Lisa. Great lesson. No thanks. Bye.